morning. I'm Teresa Rampula from She Media and Reemergence, and today we're going to go right into our interview with David Rampula, President and CEO of Ferry Ads. Good morning, David. Good morning, Teresa. Um, David, I've heard it been said uh, from news sources that this could possibly be the death of retail, and I wanted your opinion on that. Well, the death of retail. I mean, we're, we're, we're at a point where, you know, when television came out, it was the death of movies, okay? When movies came out, it was the death of theater, okay? When theater came out, it was the death of books. You know, uh, the, the news media, the, the death of something is very, very provocative, okay? And However, so. you know, yes. And, and we're, we're in a situation right now where we have a pandemic, okay? This isn't a recession. I've heard a lot of other you know, really glorified statements of, oh, this is going to be worse than the, than the, than the Great Recession, than the Depression. Yes, numbers are going to go down, but they're not going down because of any underlying economic factors. They're going down because we have a pandemic, okay? Uh, uh, the world has had a pandemic. And basically, in a matter of in a two-month cycle, all of this is going to be beyond us. And then we're going back to where we were. Yes, things may be a little bit different, but ultimately, we're still going back to a world in which there isn't a catastrophic event, uh, economic event, to hold our businesses back. So, so is it the death of retail? Well, let me ask you this question, okay? When quarantine is over, are you going to basically sit in the house and say, oh, man, quarantine's over already? I was just, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go. I don't want to do anything. You know, I just want to basically sit until my eyes water over looking up things on, on, on uh, Amazon, you know, and then, and then ordering them. And when they come in, the material's wrong, the fit's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. And then I have to do an RMA and then I have to put on a mask and gloves to go back to UPS to send it back to get my next pair. I don't think people are going to miss that. Maybe there are some people that might miss it, but I don't think everybody's going to miss that. I think people are really going to want to get out. There's going to be pent up demand. People, for the most part, everybody's not affected by this adversely, you know, and, and, and healthcare workers and, and cops and firemen and everybody else aren't spending money now. So they're still going to need to buy cars. They're still going to want to go out to dinner. They're still going to want to need clothes, everything. Things aren't all of a sudden becoming new while they're sitting in the garage or the closet. So there's a ton and a half of opportunity that this is creating. So is it the death of retail? No. I mean, look, Amazon is here to stay. It's another way to buy. But I think retail is always going to be there because we are hunters and gatherers. And I personally enjoy going to the mall, getting a cup of coffee. It's an experience now. It's not just a matter of I have to provide a pair of shoes. You know, I want to look at all the different shoes, see how they look, see how they feel, see whatever. You need to have retail for that. And just in the reaction of people, okay, this is the death of retail. And people basically say, most people in the heart say, oh, no, I really love going to the store. Well, that's the answer to this whole thing. When people I actually say, oh, almost no. personally feel that more people will go out to the store, even people that weren't uh, avid shoppers that didn't like going out as much and, and weren't, you know, shopping was almost a chore. It'll become more of a pleasure to be able to go out. I agree to be able to try on and Absolutely. feel like tactile. What makes what makes the whole what makes the whole statement of this is the death of re retail provocative, okay, is the fact that nobody wants to see the death of retail. And that's the customer's thinking. That's not just the business owner's thinking. So, you know, yeah, look, it sells newspapers. It basically, you know, it cre creates, increases ratings. But at the end of the day, it's not all doom and gloom. Right. I agree with you on that. I actually am longing for the day where I could go out and kind of be amongst other people and say, what do you think of, you know, what do you think of this shirt? Or what do you think of this new table or chair or something? Yeah, just have something good to eat that you don't cook yourself. Yeah, exactly. Now, what do you, um, I, I know that you, with the ferry, is still in operation, especially mm -hmm. it's an essential uh, vessel, obviously, to get people back and forth into Manhattan, whether it be first responders, medical personnel, um, city workers. Hey, Amen. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about um, what those people who aren't involved in and, and have to go out on the day to day? What do you think that they should actually prioritize while being home besides taking care of their health? And their Are you, you're speaking about business owners, correct? Business owners. What would oh. your recommendation be to someone here's, here's, who's here's sitting the thing. at home and saying, I'm not a essential personnel, so what could I be doing with my time to make it most productive right now? Well, well, he, he, there, therein lies the answer. The answer lies in the question. Um, what it comes down to is we're being handed a golden opportunity here. Now, now, 
yes, the news media is not promoting it that way. And fortunately, if everyone stays well and everybody keeps their health, which obviously is the most important thing in the world, now we have to basically think about going back to business in six to eight, well, eight, eight to 10 weeks. The okay? reemergence. Over with, right, the reemergence. Now, here's the thing. There's, there's the first law of thermodynamics basically says that energy is never lost. It only can change its form, okay? The bottom line is that, that the market isn't disappearing, okay? That this isn't an economic event. This is just a pandemic where the world took a break and then we're going to come back out of it. But we're being given a golden opportunity, and maybe there's not a lot of people saying this is a golden opportunity, but let me explain. The government, okay, for all small businesses with virtually – no holds barred, okay, is going to pay 10 weeks salary for all of your employees. And part of that money can go to your rent, part of that money can go to your utilities. So as far as this being such a dire consequence, perhaps it's not as bad. You know, the government is acting very aggressively. Perhaps it's not as bad as they say. So so now you're home, okay, or you're in you're you're platooning, you have people working from home wherever, but you have your employees. Maybe business has slowed down. And the truth is, for a lot of people, the reality is, especially people who are looking to reemerge, that's because their business has slowed down. So what do you do when you have your full staff on? It's not necessarily creating a major financial hardship because the government is going to give you a forgivable loan to keep them on. So what next? Well, this is, this is where the opportunity comes in. You know, look at your business. If you're very happy the way your business was running before the pandemic, well then, hey, don't fix it if it's not broken. But most business owners, there's always a lot of things that they would like to fix. And However, tweaking, whether it's a major overhaul or just It could be tweaking, tweaking it could be major. The bottom line is we're, we're embroiled in the center of our businesses. So we really don't know, we, ne we never have the time. You know, the shoemaker's kids never have their have shoes, okay? It's the same thing with the business owner. We never have time to work on our own business, but now we've been handed this opportunity. Ask your employees, what do we need to change to provide a better service, okay? A better product, okay? Um, how can we interview your customers? Go to past potential prospective customers and start asking them, you know, you know, what, what, what past customers, why haven't you dealt with us in, in, in a while? Maybe it's something you did wrong, but maybe it's something your competitors did right. Learn that information. You have time now. You have nothing but time at this point. Um, find out what present customers love about you and then accentuate that. Call up, try to find out pr prospective customers, see what they want, and then design your business to give it to them. Now, they say, well, you know, well, well, I know what I have to do. I have to automate, you know, and that all costs money. And with this, this, with this economy the way it is, and, you know, with, with the pandemic, we really can't change things. Well, the bottom line is this, okay? You can change things because beside the government paying 10 weeks of salary for you, which is spectacular, they're also offering loans up to uh, up in, in, into the millions of dollars for 1%. So if you have to pay it back, it's 1%. That's like getting money for free. If automating is gonna save you money in your business, you have to make the assumption that it's gonna at least be worth 1% interest rate on a loan. So now's your golden opportunity. They're not turning anyone away. I don't even think there's income verification on most, uh, there might be income, actually I don't even think there's income verification. These loans are being given to small businesses not just to survive, but to emerge from the stronger. So look at what you need. You know, if you have a restaurant, okay, do you need a new, a new stove? Do you need uh, iPads for the tables for ordering? Do you need a key? You, you want to put in a kiosk, okay? No matter what your business is, you can figure out how you can use that money to take you to the next level. Um, beyond that, I mean, here's another thing everybody should be thinking about, okay? Yes, the internet has changed things, okay? But every business should be on the internet in some way using it to their advantage now you say well well that means i'm going to get rid of my brick and mortar store no it doesn't mean you're getting rid of your brick and mortar store but look at every industry out there look at look at the cab industry the delivery industry they basically you know if you told them 10 years ago that you guys should be on the internet that's like hey we run a cab service we don't need to be on the internet until uber came in and said you know what it's not putting cabs on the internet Okay, it's creating an app to make it easier to hail a cab, to follow your cab. They did the studies. They looked at people who took cabs and they said, well, what's your frustration? Well, it's tough to hail a cab. Okay, when I do call a car service, I never know when the car is going to come. I don't know where it is. They were able to answer all those questions via an app on the Internet. And yes, it's still a cab service, it's still a taxi service, but they do it better. Okay. Um, I, I noticed like so many, so many businesses, especially mom and pop small businesses that offer very special products. Okay. 
Well, put that on the internet as well, okay? So besides selling to your regular customers, you also sell it on the internet. And here's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize. You don't have to sell it as you, okay? Nobody knows you're a dog on the internet, which basically means it doesn't matter who's behind the keyboard. If what you see up on the internet is magical, okay? They think your business is magical. Now, when it comes to retail, what I've seen businesses do is, let's say there's Dave's Hot Sauce, okay? Well, I sell Dave's Hot Sauce in my store for $10, Okay, well, I can actually put it online if, if, depending on what my markup is and what my margin is. And there's a lot of questions that need to be answered with this, but if I could take that and I can put it online, instead of selling it through Dave's Hot Sauce store, putting it through hotsauce.com and selling it for $8, okay? Now, I'm not paying brick and mortar on that and everything else, but it helps me sell in volume. And the more volume I can get, the, more, the, the, the bigger my margin is at Dave's Hot Sauce store. And also, I make money on the, on the online side, side as well. You should be doing both. No matter what, you have to imagine how to, how, how, to, how to take advantage of both, whether it be even if you're a doctor's office, how are we on the internet? Well, doing your scheduling doing your follow-ups today. If, if this has taught us anything, okay? I do, I do feel though, Dave, that what, what you're saying is, you know, yes, to, to, to have both opportunities as far as the internet, as well as the brick and mortar. But I personally feel that a lot, a lot more people will want kind of that connection. Uh, they, they're wanting to see somebody face to face. I could call up and make a doctor's appointment, that's great, and that's what I'll do. But I think what I'm gonna look forward to most, and I never thought I'd ever say this, but it's going to the doctor's office and actually talking to everyone sitting in the waiting room and talking to the receptionist and, and you know, whether we're get a lot of hugs. about a lot of hugs. what our experience was, um, you know, commiserating about our, our COVID um, quarantines or just to talk about the fact that I was able to walk here in the sunshine. And I think that those are kind of the things that I'll be missing as well, that I've missed as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, everybody is going to want to want to get out. Okay. And like I said, the government is coming to the aid. Okay. Of many small businesses. Um, the government is also coming to the aid of many people who are losing their jobs um, because now unemployment in New York anyway is, you know, it's usually $200 a week, but they're adding an additional $600 a week on top of that. $800 a week is a very good unemployment payment check. Okay, and the situation is that it's it's going to it's going to salve the wounds. And keep in mind, this isn't a recession or a depression that's going to last for years. Okay, this is a pandemic that within the eight to ten week cycle from the time it started, and we're already three weeks into it at at the, at the time of this taping. But we're already three weeks into it. When it's over with, okay, we're going to emerge into what we came out of. All right, so. So, and the government is putting $2 trillion as a cushion to make sure we're not emerging into something that's, that's a dire circumstance. So there's a monstrous amount of opportunity there. Let, let's look at it this way, okay? Um, as the economy goes up and as things get better, okay, businesses change and adapt to fill the needs that, that a burgeoning economy calls for. Well, right. when the economy comes back down again, needs change. Yeah, people don't need the luxury items as much, but they need the sundry items even more. And the bottom line is that, again, it's, it's the law of thermodynamics. You know, energy hasn't, hasn't, hasn't uh, uh, gotten lost. It's just changed form. So what you need to do is when things like this happen, you say, well, what are we coming out of this? What are people going to want from it? Again, that's more of coming out of a recession. This isn't a recession, okay? This is just a pandemic. It's a blip. Things will be better. And they say, well, will COVID come back in the fall? Perhaps it will, but it'll come back with, with us having a much better understanding of it. There'll probably be treatments for it. That might and get, and we'll be better prepared point. as far as so, business owners as well. Yeah, you know, there's, there's an old saying, I think it's uh, trick me once, shame on you, trick me, tr tw tw <laughs> trick me twice, shame on me. Well, the bottom line is that, you know, we haven't had a pandemic, in, a real pandemic in 100 years, okay? So we've got one. All right. I think we're going to be better prepared in case this happens again. And COVID won't be it because COVID, as, as you can see in Asia, as you can see around the world, okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's all going to get better. So we just keep, we just, we just stay the course and, and, and use the time as an opportunity. And, and as far as your business model, I don't think 
will you be making any adaptations to it for the reemergence? I know that that ferry advertising, because of the need through the health department to get the message out there, um, and through a myriad of other businesses, that that you're still in operation. Um, and obviously, the ferries are running 24 hours a day uh, continuously. But will there be any changes, maybe as far as with your employees well, having well, there's, more there's, solid um, uh, ability to work? remotely and things like that are there any changes that you think you'll be making we had you know we we were always working on the business 24 7 so the situation is that i think we have a pretty good model right now however does that mean we're not going to take advantage of what's out there right now absolutely not i've been speaking to my manufacturers and my manufacturers right now um we have we have large led signs um all leds are almost all leds in the world are created in shenzhen china Okay, they're actually manufactured there. So for months now, we've been in touch with our with our liaisons. First, asking if they're they're in their families are safe because they went through this before us, and now they're saying that their factories are opening up again. Well, that's that's marvelous. You know, one of the things that we have to that we have to that they have to face is they're filling some of their old orders. Okay, but once their old orders are filled, now they have a lull, so they're going to start stockpiling. And then at the end of the month, you know, they're going to have a lot of inventory that's, that's not sold, and then they have to make decisions. Well, the decision is, do we close down again and wait for America to catch up? Or do we basically start selling this at a little bit more of a discount so that we can keep the machine moving? You know, so this might be not, an opportunity for you to right. add more digital it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us because digital is the future of our business, okay? Now I can go back to them and I can get a preferential rate, especially if I order now, okay, during the downtime when they have no other orders, they're going to be, not, not only will they appreciate the order more, okay, but um, they'll remember this when, when things do turn around next year, when they have 100 orders and, you know, I'm 99th on the list and I need something more quickly, I could say, hey, man, you know, I was there for you, you know. And, and I found, for the most part, while business, while, while when doing something nice is in quid pro quo, it always does tend to come back to you. A positive, a positive outlook always comes back to you, especially when you're treating people the way you would want to be treated, treating right. people really. So um, in closing, because I don't want to take up too much of your time, in closing, what would you like to say um, to the audience of reemergence of, of what they should look to? Well, well, here's the thing, okay? We're managers. If we're business owners, we're managers. And I saw Gordon Ramsay say this, and I'll try to say it nicer than he did, okay? Um, but the point is, is that he said, you're a manager. And if you're not working on your business constantly, if you're not changing things, if you're not looking how to make things better on a daily basis, well, then you're not really doing your job, okay? The bottom line is like right now, and for all the reasons that I mentioned before, there's so much opportunity that we can take in the fact that the government is helping us out, we have time on our hands. You know, as managers, we need to optimize this and be the best we possibly can be and, and Look to look to hit the ground running when we come out of this, as opposed to quarantine's over, and you say what's next. Well, the question what's next is a question you should be asking when they put you into quarantine, not when quarantine is over. Well, I think that that really encompasses work as in life. You know, use this opportunity whether to learn a little new language, learn a musical interested uh, instrument, or you can never play the violin before. That's right. That's right. Or. Um, or you know to work on your business. So when you when the reemergence comes, that you are well prepared and have planned it out. And unlike going into the seclusion for COVID, we're going to come out stronger and better. So thank you so much for your time, and I wish thank you, you for having me a healthy and uh, and happy day.